My name is Phil Kleba. I'm a professor of biochemistry and molecular biophysics at Kansas State University. We're trying to answer a pretty simple question. How do things get from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell? That is, how are they transported through the cell membranes? But the answer is complicated enough that we've been studying it for many years. In this era, people forget what it was like before Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin, just prior to World War II. People died from the most ordinary bacterial infections. Everyone probably knows that the world is now running out of effective antibiotics, so it's a priority to try and find new ones. That's the medical goal of our work, new antibiotics. In our lab, the research focuses on the transport of the metal iron. It's abundant on Earth, the second most abundant metal in the Earth's crust. And it's essential to most life as we know it. Iron is highly valuable in the biochemical world. In a way, it's the gold of the microbiological world because it's needed for things like energy production, DNA synthesis, protection against toxic molecules. The ability of bacteria to obtain iron in the human body is a big determinant of whether they are pathogenic or harmless. We're studying how they do it and how to prevent them from doing it. In the context of all of this research, in the university environment, students are a high priority for our objectives. We want to educate undergraduate and graduate students here in our programs at K-State so that they become future scientists, future researchers, future MDs who are having a positive effect on the problems that I've been discussing. In my own laboratory, uh, we have four or five graduate students working towards their doctoral degrees. We have undergraduates who are coming in in between their classes to do research and learn about the scientific process that goes on in our laboratories. The more that we can train young scientists here in our programs, then the more we feel we're going to be able to address the issues that are medically and scientifically important to the world in the years to come. Our research objectives take us into many different areas of biochemistry, molecular biology, and biophysics. We work in membrane biology. We study membrane protein structure and function, the kinetics and thermodynamics of transport, bacterial cell envelope architecture, bioenergetics, genetic engineering, spectroscopy, and especially fluorescent spectroscopy. We usually begin experiments with some sort of genetic engineering that makes it easier to observe the membrane transporters we want to study. Site-direct mutagenesis is a technique that allows us to attach biophysical probes to membrane proteins, and we do it in living cells, which is unique. This is unique because it's against the usual way that biochemists study a problem. Biochemists are taught to purify molecules from cells or tissues, and then reconstitute them in a test tube for detailed experiments. But some things can't be studied that way, and membrane iron transport systems fall into that category. So we've invented and perfected techniques to place single small probes on the iron transporters of bacteria. These probes are very much like small antenna that send us signals from the surface of and from within the living cells. In that way, we can monitor and actually see, by spectroscopic measurements, the activities of the membrane proteins as they recognize iron in the environment, grab it, and essentially swallow it into the cell. The swallowing action, by the way, requires energy, so this is a classical active transport process. One of the things we're finding out is that the membrane proteins of bacteria are incredibly sophisticated, selective, and proactive in finding and binding iron. Despite the fact that they are so tiny, they're not even microscopic, but submicroscopic. They are just as perceptive and discriminatory as the mouth of an animal. They recognize what they want by its size and its chemical properties, its taste, if you will. These proteins possess what are called loops on the surface of the cell. And when the correct iron compound comes along, the loops grab it and pull it into the outer part of the protein. Then something amazing happens. The membrane transport protein actually swallows the iron complex. It has what's equivalent to a tongue deeper within it and this tongue moves aside as the iron passes through into the cell. So just like an animal's mouth, the protein, the receptor protein, tastes what it wants, grabs it in its jaws, and swallows it with the help of the tongue. If you can inhibit iron transport by pathogenic bacteria, then you will stop them from getting established and causing infections. This goal is potentially important, potentially life-saving in both human and animal health. Every year, hundreds of thousands of people die of bacterial infections in the United States alone. In veterinary medicine, the same infections hit livestock and poultry. So we are moving to a stage of research that I've been anxious to accomplish for many years. The fruition of our research experiments turning into efforts to save lives. The importance of iron in 
bacterial pathogenesis, or fungal pathogenesis, or conceivably even viral pathogenesis, is so fundamental that if you learn how to block the transport of iron by these microbes, you will take a huge step forward in blocking the diseases of humans and animals, including livestock. All of these research goals are related to agriculture. That's one of the reasons we're here at K-State. Kansas State University is one of the world's leading institutions in agriculture. And in the future with NBAF, in the study of biological agents that are dangerous or destructive to agriculture. We want to apply our biochemical research findings to that problem. I've been very impressed by Kansas State University. First of all, there's a tremendous amount of enthusiasm at K-State, a tremendous amount of excitement about research. This is not true at every university. The objectives of the K-State 2025 plan to make Kansas State a top 50 research institution, that's driving many things on campus, including enthusiasm for scientific discovery. And this is a very positive thing.